Can we talk about Thor Love and Thunder? The MCU's Forgotten Child. This movie came out only a year ago and no one is talking about it anymore. Is this the after effect of Marvel's cinematic universe? Make so many mediocre projects that people even forget that they exist. Let's talk about it. Thor is no stranger when it comes to success, based mostly on Thor 3, Ragnarok's reception it was both critically and financially a success. The initial Thor was charming and we don't talk about the second Thor. This ain't that video. Now back to Love and Thunder. This movie on paper was a box office hit. Opening weekend it broke its own record with a $140 million opening night viewed on over 4,000 screens. Domestically in its theatrical run, it made $300 million, internationally it made $400 million. Thor Love and Thunder's run ended on a high note, earning roughly a total of $760 million worldwide. This should be a win for Disney. But is it? No, apparently it's not. Something I always find myself saying is that at the end of the day, box office numbers don't determine the overall quality of a movie. Some of my favorite films were box office flops, while some of the biggest box office hits are god-awful trash. Thor Love and Thunder's critical reception ranges from decent to downright terrible. This review in particular on Letterboxd got a chuckle out of me, saying Christian took the money and bailed. The overall score on Letterboxd was 2.6. On Rotten Tomatoes, it's sitting at 63% for critic scores. It scored better with audiences at a 76%. And on Metacritic, it sits at a 57 out of 100. So what happened? The movie had a $200 million bloated budget, they filmed Oppenheimer for half of that. We know most of the budget did not go to the 13 VFX studios who worked on this film. Another point of contention here is with the director himself, Mr. Taiki Waititi who infamously dog-piled on his own movie. But let's put that aside for now, I've seen the movie myself, and I wouldn't recommend watching it. My short review is that it's a waste of two hours. Thor Love and Thunder is painfully unfunny, none of the jokes land. None of the actors appear to care at all about this film, giving half-assed performances all around. Christian Bale, arguably the most renowned actor on set, said working on Thor Love and Thunder was monotonous and it wasn't worth trying to get into character, which is crazy coming from him. This movie is visually unappealing, just an eyesore to look at. This goes without saying, but the visual effects are truly terrible. I'm not surprised by that, the majority of the VFX teams that work for Marvel are underpaid and overworked. There was a behind-the-scenes video that came out where Taika and the actress who plays Valkyrie, Tessa Thompson, ragged on Love and Thunder's visual effects. This led to numerous people in the VFX industry coming out against Marvel saying they're horrible to work for and how much they hate working on Marvel projects in general. It got pretty ugly. And lastly, Thor Love and Thunder's plot is rushed and pretty bad overall. Was this movie a tax write-off? Was it just an excuse to get paid while on vacation because none of the people working behind the camera took it seriously? Allegedly according to Mr. Bale, everyone's families were on set. Chris Hemsworth's own daughter is a character in the movie. They all had a good funky time behind the scenes. In front of the scenes unfolds a different story. Is this what to expect from the MCU for future projects? Apparently, the answer is no what with the Daredevil spin-off being reworked after disappointing the higher-ups, and Kevin Feige announcing the infamous reboot after Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania failed to meet audience expectations. But how do studios keep continuing to shoot out products like this? With ludicrously absurd bloated budgets that look terrible, with no plot structure and have awfully written dialogue. Keep in mind this movie was made a solid year before all the strikes. Marvel is course correcting so we might not get more movies like this, but my question today is, where does this movie stand in the never-ending Marvel Cinematic Universe? It's not like Nick Cage's The Ghost Rider where it's so bad it's good. It's nowhere near the hype or complexity of the Avengers, Infinity War. Will it just be a consumed product lost to time? Who knows, I don't. But to be fair, honestly there are so many Marvel projects out now that it's getting really hard to keep track of them all. Some without a doubt, will be lost to time. Does anyone remember the Inhumans TV show? Or what about the Ant-Man sequel? Apparently Lawrence Fishburne forgot he was even in the movie.